Hi everybody. A good friend of mine told me once that a good presentation starts with a question. I thought I can do better. I will start with two questions. So the first question is, uh, I think all of people here are interested in JavaScript, but who of you is not in a project currently working in, with JavaScript? So maybe Java.net or a manager. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm also not right now in a project working with JavaScript. So this leads me to the second question. Um, I have some time, or when I want to spend some time with JavaScript, I always need to think which framework or which knowledge I want to build up. So my question is, the next one is, who of you knows which framework you will take a look at next? So is it Angular 2, React? So there are some of you here, that's nice. Our talk will be about the question how we can build up knowledge which lasts longer. When we look out into this world of the internet, it's raining down frameworks. So every minute, every hour, every uh, day, there are new frameworks. So when we are investing time uh, learning new frameworks, it's always the question how sustainable is this knowledge? So our talk ask or try to solve the question which knowledge we can build up that lasts longer than milk. So we do an experiment in the next 40 minutes and we will start writing an application just in pure JavaScript. Because we think when we don't want to learn new frameworks, maybe it helps just to work with JavaScript. This means we will cover topics like ES6, web components and other APIs, but this is only to, uh, to help us finding out which knowledge we need to build up. But let us introduce ourselves first. My name is Stefan Jäger. Um, I'm in the IT industry since about 16 years, and even in my apprenticeship, I believed in the future with, with web. So I'm happy to be here 16 years later to see that web is the future. In my free time, I love to ride road bikes around in the beautiful mountains, right side of you, and uh, drive here around. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris. I'm a software engineer. And today I'll be Stefan's code monkey. <laughs> and I love the bike as well. We both work at Zilke Engineering in uh, Bern and in Zurich. And today we came by train. So who, who came by train today up here? Everyone. OK, so leave, leave your hands up, please. OK, so who was watching a movie on the train? Nobody? OK. And who of you could finish the movie before the train arrived? We had the problem. When we came here by train today, we were watching a movie. And when we arrived, we couldn't finish the movie. So we were thinking it would be great to have an application where we could enter our journey. An application would tell us which movie we could watch during this train ride. So from example, let me go from Basel to Bern. We get a recommendation of movies we could watch during this train ride. <laughs> so we see that all the movies are about 50 minutes, and we could finish the movie in the train from Basel to Bern. Or let's try uh, Bern to Gurten. And you see there are some movies which are only 20 minutes long. <laughs> OK, this is what we're going to build today with pure JavaScript. And we begin uh, just a second, with a component. We begin with a movie tile. And as Martin already uh, uh, showed us before, it would be very nice to have a movie tile which has a clear API with a title, image, rating, and runtime. But we don't want to use Angular directives or React component or something similar like this. So do you have an idea what we can use? Anyone? It's easy after the last <laughs> talk. <laughs> <laughs> so if we would have knew that Michael is explaining uh, custom elements, I could skip these slides. But with custom elements, there is an interesting story behind it. When I was preparing these slides for custom elements, 
I was at home, I uh, was sitting on my couch, and I was thinking a bit, how can I explain custom elements? My girlfriend came by and asked me, yeah, what's, what's going on, Stefan? And I told her, yeah, it's something technical, technical stuff. And I tried to explain her custom elements. It's like Sheldon explaining Penny something. It's not always going to work. So uh, she came, but she came up with a very nice idea. Stefan told me, I think you are explaining me something like this. If you're going on the road bike, this is very simple for you. You're just sitting on this road bike, and you just start pedaling, and it works. So if I translate this now in HTML code, this will be something like this. We have just a road bike. But in reality, a road bike, especially the newest one, is uh, hours or thousands of hours just development and research to build a great road bike. So if we take a look behind, so we have something very simple to use, it could be that we have a uh, complex structure. As we have seen before, we need to register the, uh, an element like road bike. And we can we use here ES6, so we can just take a class which extends an HTML element. And when this HTML element will be used, the created callback will be called, and the in rate HTML we can, for example, uh, uh, build up. So I think, again, uh, enough talk. It's now time for coding. And for this reason, I have my code monkey, Christian, which is now showing you how it is going. Thank you. OK, um, we have some kind of live coding here. So let's try it out. Um, the first thing I do, uh, I'm going to write the class uh, for the movie tile, which should be a component. So I'm going to write the class movie time and extend it from, in, from HTML element. Can't you do a little bit faster, faster maybe? Sure, like this. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't believe you now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. OK, you got me. Um, so let's have a look at what, we, what I just wrote. Uh, it's a movie <laughs> tile. And I create a callback. And when they create a callback, which is um, called when the object gets created, um, we just call the render function, which uh, puts some um, HTML into the inner HTML. And it's at the moment, it's hard-coded HTML. And what we do as well is we register the movie tile. So in the index HTML, we can now just use the, our movie tile within here. Um, and we, the only thing we have to do is we have to import our application. That's actually the only thing we use um, is a system.js loader to load our application. But besides that, we use no frameworks or libraries at all. Um, now we need an API to the movie tile. So the next thing we need is we need uh, some attributes, which would be the image name, the title, the rating, and the runtime. So let's consume these um, attributes within our movie tile. It's pretty easy. We just have to get the attributes from, the, uh, from this element and then apply the attributes within a template string, ES6 template string, into the inner HTML. Very simple. And if we have a look at the, at the demo, we now have our component here. Uh, interesting uh, side note is it's actual, uh, it's an actual application here. So if you look at uh, HTML, we see that we, ha that we have the movie tile here with our image URL, runtime, rating, and so on. So it's an actual application. Uh, another side note, I love web components. And this presentation is made of web components. So we see here the web slide and the shadow root, as we've seen before with Martin's talk. Now, if you have one single movie tile, it is not a result page yet. So what we need as next step is we need to have a possible way to use the movie tile and add some other movie tiles. Let's call it a movie view. In HTML, it would like look like something like a structure, like movie view contains some movie tiles. Maybe, Chris, you can show us how we can build this up? Yeah, sure. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new component, which is called movie view, 
we saw that uh, most of the application are structured like trees. So we're going to structure our application as tree as well. So we use the movie view and the movie tiles within the movie view. Uh, so let's cr just create a new component called movie video and register it. And let's try to create the callback again and the render method again. So it's pretty similar to the movie tiles so far. Um, there's a array movies, which is a placeholder for three movie objects. There will be uh, movie objects with properties like image, title, rating, and runtime, and so on. Okay, the next thing we do is we put a container into the inner HTML. And now within this container, we want to loop over our movies and render each movie. Uh, to render the movie, we're going to create a new method called render movie, which now calls the, which, uh, which, not, which now uses the movie tile component, which we built before. So we reuse this component. And now, how we're going to loop over this component, it's very simple. We don't use ng-repeat or anything like this. We just use plain JavaScript with movies map. So the map function returns the uh, markup for each movie tile. Great. So if you look at the example now, oh no, I'm too fast. <laughs> um, what we have now is we have a lot of code just in one application, uh, in one app.js file. So it would be nice to organize somehow this application. Yeah, the question is, have you maybe you seen already, how we can organize our application. Now I will introduce you to, uh, to an ES6 feature, and this is the only ES6 feature I will show you today. This is the modules. Why is modules such a special feature from ES6? ES6 has many features like uh, template strings, arrow functions, and a lot of them are just code sugar. So it helps us as a developer to create or develop in a nicer and faster way. But ECMAScript 6 modules made something different. It changed the JavaScript world somehow. Before ECMAScript 6 modules, we had something like the plugs around the world. We had different types of module system. So we had CommonJS, RequireJS, and they have not been compatible at all. So this standard ES6 uh, modules is something very important because they could, in these IRC chats, I think, get an arrangement how we build up modules in the future. Um, to use it, it's quite simple. We have seen it today alre already several times. We expor export a function or a class, and we import somewhere else, and we can just use it. I think this would be the way to organize also our application. OK. So we have here our app.js file. So what I'm going to do is I extract the movie tile and the movie view into separate files. So I cut the movie view and put it in the new file. Uh, just as a side note, just yesterday someone told me that movies isn't the plural of movie. <laughs> 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 but it was too late to change the whole <laughs> presentation. OK. Now what we did as well, we export this component so we can reuse it at another place. So we can use the movie view and can import it in another file. And we also imported the movie tile since we use it down there. We do the same for the movie tile. So we cop paste this movie tile into a separate file and export it as well. And we're left with the empty app.js file. So what we are going to do is we're going to create the app root component, which is also just a component, and imports the movie view and just renders the movie view. So it's at the moment it's just a simple wrapper for the movie view. Okay, this is a nice way to organize our application. So the last thing we have to do is we have to instead of call or add the movie tile into the HTML, we have to replace the movie tile with the app root. So now the application gets loaded, the app, app root gets initialized, which calls the movie uh, movie view, and then the movie view renders all the movie tiles. And this looks like this. It's not it. Um, yeah. 
So what we have now is we have just three movies, and it's just mock data, so we want to use real data. So my question is, can we use something like Angular HTTP, or is there something else we can use? Of course we can't use Angular HTTP, because we thought we make this application without any frameworks. So uh, anybody has an idea we can how we can fetch data from the internet easily? Fetch API. That's <laughs> a good point. So <laughs> fetch API is the way we is a possible way to fetch data. I want to show you now how fetch API is working. Fetch API is very interesting when we talk about standards because because it's a living standard. This means it's not right now a standard supported by all the browsers, but hey, there's a good polyfill for it. And with the polyfill, also Internet Explorer and Safari will support the Fetch API. But what's the Fetch API about? When we want to fetch data in an old-fashioned way, um, there is a concept about listeners. Today, Rob told us that observables are the new thing, promises are a little bit older, and before the promises, we had callbacks. So before the callbacks, there has been a time with listeners. And here we see that how, uh, how we would have to fetch data in the old way. We would have created this XML HTTP request, which is very interesting because the camel case is not quite correct. Then we have to register two functions. And if we open a new URL, the URL is not, not getting opened. We need to send it. So there is an easier way, and the easy way is the new shiny way with the fetch API. It's now a one-liner. We can just say fetch, give some URL, and with the promise we can get the data and uh, parse the data. Maybe we can now use fetch API? Okay. Hello? Okay, thank you. Okay, I created a new file called movies API. And I'm going to export a new class called movie API. And the only thing I use here is a static uh, method on this movie API. So we don't have to initiate a new instance of movie API. Um, and what, what you see here is you have to, the last line is the fetch. So we're going to fetch the, the, um, the time and just return a promise. So we've seen a lot of promise today, not an observable, a promise, and return it as JSON. And we also use um, template strings as well here for the duration uh, to put the duration into the base URL. That's all of our service. So we're going to use this service within our movie view to replace our uh, movie array up there and get real data. So we import our s movie API here and call the movie API with search by duration, give a hard code iteration here, and then just use the data and, and render our component with the data we got from a movie API. So we can remove all the other code here, and we should get real data. Great. Let me check this. It works, yeah. So not, what's now missing is we have now a result page, and if uh, only a result page doesn't help us, so we need a search view. So we're going to implement a search view. Google Maps has a nice API to get duration between places. So we will create a service fetching this Google API to get the duration between one st uh, place to another place. This time I also try coding. So uh, in the Google API, it's the similar way we do it with the Movies API. We are creating a class and exporting this class directly. We are also using here the static method, so we can use Google, this Google API directly in the other code. We have now a from and a to uh, parameter we want to query somewhere in the internet. For the demo, we just have a mockup at localhost, and we're also building up our query string. Like before, we are using the fetch API to fetch our data and returning a promise. So it's very simple to fetch the duration between two places. 
Now the next thing we need to do is creating a search view itself. So we are making a new file, and here also we create a custom element as we are used it before. We will call this custom element search view, and are registering this custom element. I can speed up. So in our render function, what we need to have next is also an inner HTML where we have this form to enter data from and to. So we are creating some kind of JavaScript at HTML structure with a form we want to have. So the interesting part starts now. We want to have some behavior, some events. When we click on movie, sub a movie time, we want to get a function uh, executed. But we are not using Angular or React or whatever, so we do need to do it by ourselves. But with plain JavaScript, we can just add an event listener with submit and creating a method for this event listener. In this event listener, we will then call our Google API. Of course, we need to prevent the default. And for the Google API, we need two parameters, the from parameter and the to parameter. Also here, we don't have any data binding. We need to use this query selector, and we get the value directly from it. Now we are importing our Google API, and are searching with the Google API the duration. So there is one part, when we are clicking search, we want to go to this movies result page. This is something we will do later. First of all, we are going to the app.js and now replacing this movie view by, by uh, the search view. And we are going to watch the result. So we have now our search form. When I enter something, maybe cool to puzzle, and press movie time, nothing happens. So there we need now a concept to root between the search view and the movie's result view. So can we use ng-root? Of course not, because ng-root is a component of AngularJS. So here now I want to introduce you to the routing standard of HTML. This is a, a sad story because, unfortunately, there is no standard yet. So we need to find a way to implement a router. Maybe, Chris, you have an idea? Yeah. This is going to be the, to be the most difficult part of our live coding. Um, I just want to give you a, a second to think about how you would implement a router. It's not that easy. Or actually this. Um, if you think about the router, in a single page application, you don't want to refresh the whole page, but you just want to refresh a part of the page. So let's say this uh, dashed um, square is our um, place we want to put our pages in. So this thing will be our router U. It's similar to NGView, for those who are familiar with Angular. And so we need a, a way to put our search view or our movie view into this router view. Um, we start with our ap application JS file, and the first thing we do is we replace our movie view with this router view. We haven't implemented implemented router view yet. We're going to implement the router view later. Okay, so now we have the router view, and we need a way to say to tell the router where we have to navigate. So the router needs a method called navigate where you can tell the router to go to this route. We're going to implement the we're going to implement this navigate method as later as well. So now the router knows he needs to navigate to search. He knows there's a router view, but he doesn't know which component uh, maps to which uh, route. So we need the router we need to tell the router which route maps to which component, which we do here. So that's all we need to do in the app.js file to use the router. We have a configure method, a navigate method, and we have our router view. So let's go to the router view. Um, 
the router needs to know the router view. So um, he needs to call the random method eventually. And when the router calls the random method, he calls the render method with the component. And the router view simply appends a new component into this view. Um, if we would call this method a few times, we would append at another child all the time. So we would end up with a lot of uh, pages beneath each other. So we need to empty the router view first. So we remove all children of the router view. And the last thing we have to do have is we have to register our router view to the router. So the router knows wi where the view is. That's all we have to do for the router view. Uh, now we go into the router itself. On the top you see the router configuration, which holds the mapping. And at the bottom you see the router, and you see all the, co all the methods we just used before. So the configure, navigate, and register the router view. So let's start with the router view. The router view is simply uh, a method where we, ma where we um, map the router view to, the, to a property on the router. So we know the, uh, the router view. Um, next up is the configure method. As you've seen before, we hand over a config callback to the router. So we just up, uh, call this config callback and give the config callback to the router configuration you see in the top. It looks a little bit complicated on the uh, at the beginning, but it makes sense if you see the whole picture. And the last thing we do is we want to navigate to a new route. So what we do is we have to ask the router config which um, component belongs to which route. So we ask the router config, get me the root for this uh, root we just got. And what the router config does is it just goes through all the mappings and returns the correct map, like this. And what you can then do is we just can call the router view and tell the router view to render the next component. That's it. That's the router. So let's use the router in our search view. So when we got the search result and know the duration, we need to go from the search view to the movie view. And we can do this with just uh, asking the router to navigate to the movie view. That's all. Um, one little thing is we didn't implement the duration at uh, the parameters here. We implemented it in our example application, but we uh, left it here out because uh, of it would take a lot of time to <laughs> explain this as well. And let's try the, our final application with uh, Cool to Basel. And let's have a look what movies we should watch. Uh, so we, we should watch um, Forrest Gump, Star Wars, and The Matrix when you go from Cool to Basel. Remember that. Yeah, we have seen now how we can create quite a simple app just in pure JavaScript. So, what are we going to do about this? We have good parts in our application, we have bad parts in our application, and we have ugly parts in our application. So, we take a look at this. The first good part is we have no dependencies at all. So, we are free, we don't have to update libraries, we don't have to learn new frameworks, we are completely free. Maybe some of you remember LeftPad. This is something when a dependency is taken away, it can break your application. In our application, we never have this. Secondly, I think most of you know these pictures. So this is the AngularJS learning curve. So you're learning a new framework, and it takes time and some iteration, and you get better and better. And then maybe you're now on the top of this AngularJS learning curve. But now AngularJS 2 is coming and you start again. And you start again with React, you start again with Ember. So the learning curve uh, we don't have in our application because we didn't learn a framework. We just learned pure JavaScript. But we also have bad parts. Our application 
has no dependency injector, as Angular, for example, has. So it's not so easy to test. You just cannot just replace a service by a mock service. Also, a bad part is, and I think Michael before showed us, is somehow the browser support for so standards are, is not usually that good. For example, custom elements is not totally supported right now. And we have one really bad part, or I would call it ugly part. We are had implemented the router for ourselves. So what we did in the end is nothing else than just create a new framework. So what did we learn about this? We, had, we have summarized four lessons we want to give you with. And lessons, lesson one, Chris will show you. Um, lesson one, learn concept, not frameworks. So when you think what we learned today, with Angular or with RxJS and so on. Um, you learned a lot about frameworks and how to use it in different, or libraries and concepts and how to use it in different uh, frameworks. For example, let's have a look at our router. Um, our router configuration looks very similar to Aurelia or Angular or even to React. Um, the syntax is a bit, little bit different but uh, the idea behind is always we have a route and we have a component. So if you know how a router should work, it's much, much easier to learn a new uh, router concept of a new framework. The second learning is that you should use standards as much as possible. Why? Remember our service for the Movies API or the Google API? If we use it in this way, we can reuse it directly for example, in React. Here, we have our movie API, and it's the same API we have used in our application. If you would have used maybe an AngularJS service, because it's just easier, it's diffi more difficult to migrate to another framework. Learning number three. Okay, that's an important one, and we heard it a lot today. It's components. Components are not a new concept, it's a very old concept, and I think we we do it for 20 years or so. Um, but if you look at the next generation frameworks, all the frameworks have the, the core concept of the frameworks are components. So start to think in components and try to um, isolate and abstract parts of your um, application into smaller components. Um, here again, we have our movie application, which uses components, Aurelia uses components, Angular 2 components, and React for sure use components. So start thinking components. And now we have the last learning, lessons learned. So learn a standard once, learn it right, and you can use it everywhere. I told you before something about ES6 modules, and today we have seen it already on several points. So if you learn ES6 modules once, you will use it in Aurelia, you can use it in Angular 2, and you can use it in React. So if you're investing your time learning standards or JavaScript basic features, you're investing your time to invest in knowledge which is more sustainable, which holds longer than frameworks and for sure longer than some milk. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> um, honestly, it depends on the team. Um, that we have a lot of um, angle and one knowledge in our, in our uh, company, and depending on the team, I would probably use angle one. But if I could choose, I would use React and Redux or RxJS, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions, further question? No? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much you. for this interesting talk. We have also a little